I have the singular pleasure to introduce to you our pastor, our leader in the Young Professionals Forum that will take the opening uh, session for this panel session, Pastor Tobi Nadozi. Pastor Tobi Nadozi is a pastor, is a mentor, is a seasoned innovation specialist, entrepreneur, and digital technology expert. He's worked in both the private and public sectors. He started his career in the oil and gas sector, moved over to work with the federal government, after which he spent about 20 years in the financial services sector, working as a senior management staff in the banking and insurance sectors. He has an MBA from Bangor University in Wales, and he is a fellow of the British Computer Society. He is also a chartered banker, and also possesses a master stroke in information technology. Toby attended the Advanced Management Program, EMP 26 of the Lagos Business School. He has mentored young professionals from all walks of life, and he is currently the Divisional Ed Technology and Innovation Central Securities Clearing System, PLC. He's been happily married for 15 years now. He's blessed with an amazing wife and four wonderful children. Join me as I welcome Pastor Tobi Naduze. He will give us the opening uh, introduction into this panel session, and thereafter, we would begin to pose questions to our panelists. You're welcome, sir. Please keep the applause. Praise the Lord. Once again, I want to um, thank the organizers for organizing this program. And for everyone who has come in, I believe you are blessed already. I pray that the remaining parts of the program, you will get your blessings in Jesus' name. We're looking briefly at mentorship before we go into the panel, the panel for developing great leaders. And um, I want to tell you the surest path to success is when you follow paths that are not shortcuts, but shortcuts. That's paths that have been proven and paths where you can go through and come out and be confident of what you have done. So in the world today, we have a lot of people who want to achieve success without going through the process. And because they don't want to go through the process, they are unable to repeat what they have done or they are ashamed of what they have done to achieve that success. And that's where mentorship comes in. Because mentors are expected to let you avoid the errors that they have passed through. So as we look at mentorship, there are five categories of mentors which you could have. The first one are specialized mentors. When we talk about specialized mentors, if you want to be a medical doctor, and you want to have a mentor that is in the medical field, that's a specialized mentor. So that means the mentorship is strictly directed towards a specialized role. You want to be a banker, you look for a mentor who has achieved much more than you know, others in that particular line you want to tread in, and you let the person mentor you. So we have specialized mentors. We have specific mentors. These ones are expected to cover a certain part of your life. Because of, um, you know, social media and all that, which we have, in fact, I think another mentorship group, not I think I know, is social mentors. I'll talk a little bit about that. So specific mentors are those who you say, I don't think I have seen someone who is actually able to do all I want to achieve. But in this particular aspect of my life, this person seems to have done pretty well, so I'd like this person to be my mentor, specific mentors. We are spiritual mentors. And I want to caution us, some of the errors we made earlier on in our lives when we're trying to grow was to take someone, because the person was ahead in a particular thing, to mentor us across board. So a spiritual mentor may not necessarily 
be able to mentor you in your field. Because he doesn't have the skills, he doesn't have the capability, he has never done it before, he doesn't even have the knowledge. So if you tell me, oh, please, um, you're a leader in the church, you are going to be my mentor. And I've never done engineering, for example, let's assume I've not. And you want me to mentor you on an engineering field. I may not be sufficiently qualified to mentor you. But if it comes to spiritual things, oh, pray for you. Um, you see dreams. I'm not saying you should bring your dreams to me. You see dreams and you are worried. And you need someone to, you know, help you while you are praying. You have a Bible passage you don't understand. You need someone to help you to bring in-depth interpretation to the Bible um, passage. Spiritual mentors. So there are spiritual mentors who will help you to be properly equipped spiritually. But they may not be able to help you when you talk about certain specialized skills. Am I connecting to you this morning? Are you there? Are you hearing me? Then we have social mentors. Unfortunately, social mentors seem to have become so popular. And I'll tell you the danger in social mentors. So social mentors are some of the hype, hyped people around. Some of the hype personalities also around. Some of those that have a whole lot of social content that connects to your aspirations, but you don't have any personal connection with. So you don't really know the type of lives they have and all that. So social mentors have their place, but you need to be very careful when you want a social mentor to mentor you because you don't know the person's life. So don't have excessive expectation beyond what you see on the social scene. I'll give an example. Oh, you love music. And you see someone who, on, on the platforms, is um, doing very well. Or maybe it's an influencer, and you want to do digital marketing. And you see the person doing very well. And um, you know, oh, you say, this person is going to be my mentor. I see what he's doing on the social media platform. You'll be shocked. There are so many CEOs on social media who brag about how much they have that in reality are starving. But they are so hyped on social media that the day you get to meet them, if you are not careful, your bubble will burst because what you would see is different from what you have been seeing. So as you connect to social mentors, be very, very careful. You know, the other day, someone came and said, oh, I saw this person. I want this person to mentor me. I said, what do you want the person to mentor you for? And the person was telling me, oh, she's so young. And then look at what she has achieved. She's done this. She's done that. She's done this. I said, it's OK. Incidentally, I knew who she wanted to mentor her. And um, I said, so um, why did you choose her? Oh, she's so amazing. This person told me about how she is. This person told me about how she is. A few weeks after that, the person who they wanted to mentor on something specifically was busy coming to cry about that same challenge. But on social media, she did not want to withdraw what she had said and pushed on social media so that people would not look down on her. So be very, very careful. So we have social mentors. There is a place for social mentorship. But until you connect to the individual, the depth you need to be careful about. Then you have some people who have what I call sample mentors. Oh, someone says, this person is good. OK, let me sample the person. Oh, this one is good. Let me sample the person. So five categories of mentors. The first one, let me see if you are following me. The first one, can you speak out louder? Let me hear you. Specialized mentors. So you want to be um, a chief financial officer of an organization. You look for someone who has done finance very well. You want to be a chief auditor, a chief compliance officer of an organization. You look for someone who has done it so well so that you, you know, leap ahead of your peers. Some of the things that they have done wrongly and corrected, they're able to mentor you so that you do it better. You want to be the CIO, CDO, chief information officer, chief digital officer, chief data officer of an organization, you look for someone who has done data so well, done digital so well, 
specialized mentors. The second one, specific mentors. So you take a part of your life. You can say, okay, my marriage life, there is this couple who I have known, their life, their marriage, their children, if they have, but everything above their marriage is something which I look up to, specific mentorship. So you say, oh, excuse me, sir, excuse me, ma'am. Please, can I come to discuss with you? I'm about to get married, or I'm, young, I'm a young um, couple. And um, so that you guide us and let us know what we need to do, specific mentors. So they cover specific areas of your life. Or maybe you are someone, you have a challenge with public speaking. You can gather information. You can drill and research data. But to present it, you'll be shaken. You look for someone who is good in gathering the data and presenting it, presentation skills. And you meet the person, please, I have a challenge. I know how to gather things, but when it comes to the time to present it, I fail. When it comes to the time to pitch my proposal, I'm unable to pitch it properly. I've heard you speak, I've heard you pitch different things. I've seen how you've done it. Can you mentor me? And why I mentioned the person must know how to gather the information before pitching is sometimes your ability to pitch is based on how you have collated and prepared your, you know, your data, your research before the pitching. So specific mentors. The third category, are you with me? Let me hear you speak loud. Spiritual mentors. So our ministers, our leaders, our pastors, uh, you know, different category of leaders. We tell them that they should be uh, praise the Lord. We tell them that they should lead us spiritually. So spiritual leaders are those who handle spiritual aspects of our lives. You know, Bible passages, you want to be a minister of the gospel, you see someone who, you know, you've looked at his life, the testimonies around him, the impact of his ministry, and you say, oh, be my spiritual mentor. The fourth one, social mentors, they have their place. Please, don't misunderstand me. So truly, you can look at how someone has climbed, and you say, oh, boss the person, DM the person. I've seen your growth. Please, can you let me know how you have grown? The only challenge, like I said, is be careful because you don't know their depths. And since you don't know their depths, be careful so that you don't load your life on someone who does not have depths, even though the person is perceived to be doing well. There are so many marriage counselors who are not married. Praise the Lord. There are so many people who are not doing very well in relationship. In fact, if you yourself have an experience with them in friendship, you will run away. But they are the best relationship counselors on social media. There are many people on social media who teach about wealth. But the next 5,000 naira to eat tomorrow is not in the bank account. So don't load your life on them. And there are so many people who seemingly look wealthy on social media. And it looks as if their wealth was gotten from what they are projecting, but it was gotten from something else. The other day, someone who people were respecting came to meet me and he was discussing with me. And he said, Pastor, please pray for me. So I, I smiled. I said, pray about what? He said, pray for my business. So I was about to pray. Then something just, you know, thank God for the Spirit of God. I just got that leading. Don't pray. So I looked at him. I said, I have a leading not to pray for you. That maybe you should go and meet my own or guy, my pastor. He said, why? I said, because I just have a leading that what is giving you wealth would kill you the next time you do it. And he looked at me and said, how did you know? I said, that's just the leading I have. And so I cannot pray for you to get into what will kill you. And he looked at me. And he started crying. His wife was with him. And he said, do you know that my last trip, they almost caught me. 
I said, caught you with what? They said you went on a business trip. He said he was carrying drugs. And that the reason why he came to the prayer meeting that day was because he was to go on another trip again. And he was afraid that they may catch him this time around. I told him, I said, thank God you have come to the prayer meeting. The next trip you go to and you carry drugs, you will be caught. But guess what? His packaging, what he has pushed to everybody is that he's a successful businessman that imports things into the country, but he's a drug peddler. So be careful with social uh, media mentors. And finally, the last one, sample mentor. Someone says, oh, this person is very good. Without you checking what you need in mentorship, you just jump on the bandwagon. Please be my mentor. And there are so many people like that today. You see someone, you just, excuse me, sir, can you be my mentor? Excuse me, ma, can you be my mentor? And sometimes I ask them, what do you want me to mentor you on? And, you know, I've been looking at your life. How are you sure what you are seeing is not packaging? What do you want? And they means their words. And I tell them, I say, go and come back in six months. More often than not, they don't come back. You know why? Because there was really nothing that connected them to the individual they wanted to mentor. So, as we look at these five things, as I wrap up, when you talk about mentorship, the gains of mentorship, number one, you are able to leapfrog your peers because you are standing on the shoulder of elders. You are able to leapfrog your peers because you are standing on the shoulder of elders. There is a difference between being an elder and being an aged person. Age does not necessarily ascribe eldership rights to an individual. An elder is someone who has been proven to have done things and done it so well and is respected. So I'm not talking about an aged person. I'm talking about an elder. I know there is a saying that when um, an elder is seeing something, if you climb on top of a tree, you may not see it. So when you go on with good mentors, you leapfrog your peers. Number two, the process of life is less burdensome for you. Life is a process, and it comes with natural challenges. When you go with mentors, it's less burdensome. Less burdensome because, number one, you have someone to speak to. Number two, the assurance that you have someone who have gone through what you have gone through gives you confidence. Are you with me? The assurance that there's someone who has done this that I want to do, that I can talk to. There's a way it gives you confidence. You can talk to the person. And finally, number three, you find out also that when you have mentors who have gone through a process and you are going through that process, it's easier for you to make your mark early. It's easier for you to make your mark early. We're we'll going to the panel, and I believe using this introduction, when we go into the panel, all your other questions will be responded. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. We we'll would request that our panelists please come on stage. I'll be doing this with uh, my sister, Sister Faith Okun. So please. Yes, yes. Dr. Olumide, please. This is Victoria Afolayo, Mr. Obina Okafo.
We've learned quite a lot this morning, and we have heard again and again that leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. And we've had the privilege to learn from uh, seasoned speakers and panelists. We're now interacting with them and asking some questions that would help us leapfrog like we've learned, will help us to learn and shorten processes, and of course, help us to make our mark in time. So I'll be going from uh, myself and my co hanko will be going from one of the speakers to, to the other, uh, in no particular order, to answer some of the questions that would help us to really get this sunk in into horse mentorship panacea for developing great leaders and I will start again from Pastor Tobi Naduzi in your 20 years of innovation in the technology space in the banking and insurance sector I'm sure uh, mentorship has played some significant role and so in two minutes we'd like you to please tell us what role Mentorship has really played in your ascent. Two minutes. Thank you, sir. Okay, so um, I'll say the first thing mentorship has helped me to do is to help me balance my aspirations. So sometimes, I mean, 20 years ago, I was, I was still pretty young. I was um, in my late 20s, and um, I had dreams. I had great aspirations and ambitions. So one of the things mentorship did was to fine-tune the ambition, to balance the ambition. So I think that's, that's very critical because it gave me the opportunity to dream larger than I thought, but to limit the width of my dream. So I wanted to do so many things at the same time. So my mentor had to tell me there are battles you should concentrate on at first. That's the first thing. The second thing was my mentor forced me to pass through the process. So um, he said, oh, you want to be this? Even if you have the opportunity to be it today, are you prepared? So that means he made me pass through the process. I kept on preparing for opportunities before opportunities came. So every time I worked, he would check up to say, oh, you said you were going to write this certification exam because in five years' time, you want to be so, so, so. Don't wait for three years to write the exam. Pass the exam now. So some exams that in my initial plan was going to be after five years, four years, I did them in two years. Strangely, I remember my first opportunity to become a CIO. I didn't know I would be a CIO in about three or four years, but suddenly an organization called. Someone was like, let's try this young man. He may fit in into the role. I went in for the interview. Because my mentor had forced me to pass through a process, when I went in for the interview and they were asking me questions, they were wondering, have you done CIO before? I said, I've never done CIO. I've never even been the head of a department of technology. I got the job. I got the job because I was prepared, because I had passed through the process on the fast track. So number one, fine-tuning your ambition. Number two, enforcing your passing through the process. And I think number three, handling you properly when you face challenges. So there were challenges that others would face. They didn't have anybody they, you know, whittled down or whittled out. My mentor will come, he will challenge me. I can cry. I mean, younger days, I don't cry again like that, you know. So, you know, he would, you know, encourage me. He would throw me back into the fire. Sometimes he would say, okay, don't worry, I'll pay for this exam. Go back and write it. Never give up. So those are three major things which mentorship did to me in my life. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Can we put our hands together? That was actually apt, straight to the point. I'm sure we've learned one or two things. Uh, it, this is a rare privilege to have great men and a woman in our midst from whom we can learn so much at little or no cost. No, no cost, really. Okay, thank you so much, sir. My next question, we actually go to, um, to our doctor in the house, Dr. Lumide Adedeji. Okay, as it is, during the introductory speech by uh, Pastor Nadoze, he talked about mentors not being perfect. They also have their shortcomings. 
And that is why, as mentees, we have to be careful when choosing mentors. So how do we deal with the fact that mentors also have their own shortcomings, sir? Thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be here. And uh, God bless every one of you. Um, in life and in career, because the beauty of angel is that they don't have flaws. But the challenge with angels is that they can't improve. But the beauty of men, including mentors, is that even though we have flaws, we can what? We can improve. So please, in career and even in private life, don't only have mentor. You must also have sponsors in your life. Those who will speak for you, even when you are not there. Like my brother my, and my pastor have spoken. I've known him for a long time. We've actually worked together in a bank together. If, I think two or three banks together. So I know him very well. So what he said, what he has said, is absolutely correct. Mentors also have their flaws. So sometimes you may need to have two or three mentors so you can balance things up. When he was speaking, he said that we can have a spiritual mentor that might not fit in into your career goals. He may not be an engineer and you want to study engineering, or you are studying engineering. So if you want your spiritual mentor to also be your career mentor and also your social mentor, you may not get it right. So he has told us earlier on, have different mentors for different parts of your life. So he said earlier that some mentors or some married counselors are not even married. So you can't go to such a person to make you a better person. Because men, as the challenge to our flaws, have different mentors for different parts of your life. And in addition, have sponsors, and God will see you through. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'll come very quickly to Mrs. Afolayo. Learn some things again about the shortcomings and want to find out are there really benefits in, uh, for proteges, mentees, on the studying and discovering the weak points of their mentors or maybe their hero figures? Thank you very Oh, thank you very much for that question. Um, if I can get you right, you are saying that is there any benefits? Benefits. Yes. Seeing the weakness. The weak points. The weak points of your mentor. Yes. Okay. As a protege. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I, I would say there's no there's benefits in seeing the weak points of your mentor, because um, like uh, my people have said here. You can't get everything in one person sometimes. We have different calling, even in the church of God. You see some people, they can be very active in praying, while sometimes they can be cold in some area. And you look at it that, oh, this person is a prayer warrior. I want to be like that person. But when you look at the other side of that person, you might find out that the person is not actually there where you want the person to see to be. So in that circumstance, you might look at that area that is a weak area for that person. And you, as a mentee, you don't have to take offense in that because you know that somebody might not have everything that you need in that person. You might not get everything that you need in that person. But I want to say that in all, we should understand that 
even though that person has a weak area, that does not mean that you cannot get the best out of that person in the area where you want that person to be a mentor to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. We can do better than that, please. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. We really appreciate it. And uh, now, I would like, to, my next question will go to Mr. Obina Okafo. Just as in relationship, even after God has spoken, it takes a process of choosing and wooing your partner. And that is why some relationship ends at the stage of courtship and they don't get through to marriage. Okay, bearing that in mind, I'd like you to guide us through the process of choosing and wooing a desirable balanced mentor okay thank you very much for having me once again and thank you for the question um one thing we have to talk about is that it takes two to tango and if you must have um, a mentor there must be an agreement the bible said two cannot agree except if they i mean some two cannot work together except if there be agreement so um, so the process of choosing was, first of all, you must be clear of what you really want to be mentored on. After having uh, been spoken to God, I mean by God, you have gotten clarity as to, maybe you're looking for, so be very clear as to what you really wanted. And then look out for who has what you wanted in terms of mentorship or skill or ability, just like having said, not everyone that are good in one area could be good in another. So find out, is it a specific mentorship you want? Is it a social one? Is it a spiritual? Find out one that has the um, skill or what you want that can deliver to you based on several parameters you would have checked out. Then take up the step of finding out how to reach out to him or her. Some of them may not be too close to where you are. It could also be something you can easily reach out. But you must be willing also to be mentored because sometimes you realize that a lot of people who take up the mentorship role are so busy. Most of them may not be so available at all times. So it should not be something that after spending one's time, you realize that you are not serious about the whole thing. So you must show some level of seriousness and commitment. Now, another thing also that will help you is that at the point you have signed on with the mentor, you must not give up. Because there are some times also that the mentor may not be fully available for you. So that don't think that, but as long as you have defined and identified that this is the person that actually I needed, Either I pray for you have checked through other moments that I need this person. You have to do like that woman in Luke chapter 18 that keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Eventually, you get it. So the process who has to be to identify what you really needed and find out who can be there. Then take step to reach out to that person. Even if there could be some resistance at times, don't give up. Just follow through and be committed to it. That's what I think you have to do. Thank you, sir. Be committed. You are very grateful. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We'll go very quickly because of our time. Uh, now, I'll come to Dr. Olumide. I'm sure some people are still asking, who exactly is a mentor? How does it connect to the role of a performance manager, say, at work? How does it connect to having a hero figure, a hero figure for instance? Someone has asked that, so I have some mentors. And writing on the question that my sister just asked, that there are some people you really want to be mentors. Some of our people have sent in questions to say, I have people that I want to be my mentors, but they are far away. How do I get close to them? So who is a mentor? Does it have anything to do with the role of a performance manager, a hero figure? How do we get close to them? How do we woo them? Thank you, sir. Ah, that's a tough question. Who is a mentor? But if you listen to Pastor Tobey Inadoze when he was talking earlier, you have gotten the definition of who is a mentor. Why do you even need a mentor in the first instance? See, when I started my career, I graduated from
from the University of Ibadan in 94. I was doing, we were about writing my final um, exams at school when this international organization came to UI to interview or conduct an aptitude test for the best students in UI. We had 79 departments in UI then. So they picked two best departments, uh, two best students in each department to conduct aptitude test. It was one of my lecturers who was my mentor then that submitted my name. Because he saw the seriousness in this young man, this small boy, that want to become somebody in life. The first thing is, who is a mentor? You and I need to make up our mind that this is what I want to achieve. That desire must be there. Even there are times mentors will choose you without you even choosing them. They will help you to grow. I am what I am today, not because I'm the best student. I've learned from, if I, I have more than 10 mentors, both spiritual, like Pastor Tobe said, I have spiritual mentor, I have social mentor, I have career mentor, I have um, in, in engineering, I have mentors, in the campus, I have mentors, in financial, I have mentors, in banking, I have mentors, in telecoms, I have mentors, I have mentors everywhere, because I know I'm not the best and I can't be the best, so I don't deceive myself. So I choose mentors because I want to grow. Some mentors also choose me because they saw the desire in me. And here we are today. So who is a mentor? You can choose a mentor, or a mentor can choose you when they see that you're serious. And that's why, like Pastor Unadoze said, and the other panelists, you need to make up your mind on what you want to be. Because the purpose of mentorship is that in five years' time, you wake up and you look up and say, Father, I thank you for how you've done my life. That is the purpose. Mentorship is not for fun. It's not for social gathering. No, it's not just to play away. No, it's to make you be a better person. While Pastor Nadezi was talking, he said, if you sit on the if you stand on the soldier of a giant, what will happen? What will happen? You'll be taller than him. So do look for the mentors who are better in each area of your life that you desire. And in a short while, you'll be better than what you think. So therefore, as you are now in your mind, make up your mind. I'll be writing it out. And I can recommend mentors for you. When it comes to spiritual, you have a pastor here already. My sister is here. I'm meeting her for the first time. I've collected her number. Am I right? I have her number now. So in the next five years, if I see her upstairs, I say, sister, we're together. You know me now. And she knows me. Simple. This is my brother. Before we leave here, we'll talk. Because something good is coming out of everybody. That's why networking is the best form of mentorship. And God will bless us. Thank you very much, sir. Something good is coming out of me. Okay. I hope we are all taking advantage of this uh, forum. If our leader is already taking numbers, I wonder what you are waiting for. Okay, thank you so much, sir. The next question I have here, I'd like to, to go to Pastor Tobin Nadozi. Now that we know who a mentor is, the question that comes to mind is, who are those that need mentors? Looking at the audience, the category we have here in, in various proportion, um, do unemployed or uh, new graduates require mentors? Do unemployed or new graduates require mentors? Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. I think the question is simple. We all need mentors. You know, um, Except our sister that I don't know. The two people beside me, Dr. Olumide, and uh, they're all pastors, by the way. I don't know why I'm the only one giving designation. These are all ministers, and we've been together. We've been together for over 20 years, some of us, in this church. 
we all need mentors. I decided to pursue PhD when Dr. Lumide, in the midst of a tough banking career, got a PhD in physics. I went to my, told my wife, I said, ah, this man has got his PhD of all courses in this world, physics, of all universities in this world, UI. I started doing my own. I'm going gradually, but I will get there very soon. But guess what? That's mentorship. You have someone who sets a target for you. So you have to pick what you know you need help on, or you want to leapfrog others and look for someone who can help you. First of all, being not here, we worked under companies that were under the same like, um, ownership at a time. I learned something from him. Before, when challenges are my way, you will see it on my face. If um, I'm passing through a tough time, once you look at me, you will see it on my face. And I found out that as you are climbing up in leadership, people should not be able to predict you by looking at your face. As a good leader, your face should not be a mirror for everything going on in your mind. But I was like that. When I'm not happy, you will see it on my face. If you come, but him, in the midst of the toughest of challenges I've seen professionals pass through, every time we met, he was always smiling, like he's still smiling now. This happened 10 years ago, 2010. Because my MD, who was also his MD before he moved, um, changed industry, would all to be what is wrong again. I'm like, ah, okay, how do you know something is wrong? You'll be like, look at your face. You are not happy. I'll be like, yes, uh, CBN has not approved this. But when I learned from him, so now, guess what? No matter what is happening, no matter, you will see what? A smile. Because it shall come to mentorship. You need to look for what you need help on and find help. So we all need mentors from when a child is born. And let me wrap up with this. You see a, a, a child that is eight years old playing the violin in an amazing way. What happened? The difference between that child and another child who is eight years who learned violin also from three is that one picked a mentor and said, oh, I want to play like this, my mentor. The other one kept on listening to class and playing the violin. There will always be a difference. We all need mentors. If you have not started getting mentors that will challenge you to get to places you never thought you'd get to, I think you should start now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think it's safe to say that uh, even people working on structured organizations, corporate organizations, everywhere they need mentors. We all need mentors. I'll come to Pastor Obina. So does a protege have a role to play in the success of his mentorship program? I decided that I want this person as my mentor and, and the mentee. Do I have a role to play in the success of, of that mentorship program? Of course, as I said earlier on, every relationship requires commitment. If one party of the relationship is not as committed, it will not work. And at this point in time, the one that has need of the other most, though, uh, as uh, Dr. Olumide have said, sometimes a mentor may be the one that will choose you, not necessarily the other way around. And then what that implies is that um, one person has to push the other. But uh, the, the summary of it all is that both parties has a part to play to ensure that the mentorship in a relationship succeeds. And it has to require serious commitment so doing that means that you have to be serious. You that requires to be mentored has to be serious and make out the time required. It shouldn't be something that uh, where the mentor is available, you are not available. You can afford to wait for the mentor or I mean um, uh, manage his time or manage his uh, unavailability, but not shouldn't be the other way around. So we must have that commitment. Even as a mentor too, you must have the commitment to ensure that the process works. That's the thing, the major thing I could pick up from there is the commitment from parties involved in the mentorship. That's what I think. Promote sir, the hands together. Okay, thank you so much, sirs and ma. I'll have uh, our mom in the house, 
Mrs. Victoria Afolayo. I'd like you to just give us, like kind of say, practical steps to take. Because as it is in mentorship, you see that sometimes mentors or let's say coach figures, they cross the line. And then as individuals who desires to be mentored, how or what are the safeguards? Or what are the red flags? At what point should you withdraw? Thank you very much once again. Um, if you have a mentor, you have to watch out for the type of um, the type of things that you see or your expectations. You you have an expectation, and you want you have a goal, and that leads you to look for a mentor. Like we said, it's not always that you look for a mentor, a mentor can look for you to see you as somebody committed, dedicated, serious, and just speak on you and said, see, come, this and this and this you need to do, you need to know this, and it will want to show you the way. But in a situation where you are seeing things that are different from what your goals are, you are seeing things that are different from what your expectations are, and as you are even following, you are not really gaining, then you have to look at it if it's worth continuing. Oh, like uh, Pastor Nadese said, uh, I, I have a daughter, when he was to write uh, his exam, um, the YEC exam, and he was also looking at it that, oh, I want to be like this person by, him, by herself. She just pick up the challenge and pick a student in her class that was always coming first and said she wants to be like that lady. And through that, her performance changed. She started reading more than what she was doing before. And by the time she finished that school, she, ended, she wrote the work, she had a very good result. That's, that's how to do it. But if along the line she finds out that this lady that I've, uh, this girl that I've chosen in my class, that I like the way she's good, the way she's um, performing in the class and everything, and find out that at the end of the day, the performance of that lady dropped, she started messing around and everything, then this, she will not continue with that type of girl. So I believe that you has a responsibility to know what you want, what you need, and where you are going to. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'll come to Pastor Nadezi, and I'd like to ask that how do we create multi-level mentorship? By this, I mean that, um, like you mentioned when you were Evening, uh, given the opening, uh, the opening statements to this session, uh, elders are not elders by age. So, how do we create multi-level mentorship? Do we say, okay, now we just have a mentor, and a thousand people want to be ment uh, want to be their mentees, or is it possible that within the one thousand there are people that are potential? mentors also to some of the members within that team that want mentorship? Or should we always look to an advanced person at all times for mentorship? Okay, th thank you. Um, so I, I posted something on IG, um, Instagram, um, for this program, and my, my statement was very clear. I'll be coming along with great leaders to raise leaders. Nobody who is a good mentor wants to stand alone. I traveled to a village the other day, and there was a very beautiful mansion down in the east, southeast in the country. We, we do that a lot, but I think we're learning our lessons. I saw a very big mansion, a very, very big mansion, standing in the midst of the village. And the person who built the mansion was the only star in the village. But guess what? He stopped coming to the village. 
Because every time he comes to the village, everyone will queue up to see him. At a point in time, his life was not safe. I went to another town, not so far from this particular one, which is close to mine. It's called Oba, for those who go along the southeast road. You would see so many story buildings. Go to Newe, go to Onicha. I mean, I'm talking southeast. You see so many of them. You know why? Once this one is successful, he trains as many people as possible. So the one who are the lower level of the pyramid, they have people to look up to. And so that way you create multiples of leaders to look up to. Good mentors always raise leaders that will raise leaders. And the chain will continue. So I, I don't think um, it's, it's something we have to, you, you have to, you know, um, put a process around. I think once you see a very good mentor, in fact, let me tell you, if you see a mentor who has not raised leaders that can stand their own, run away from that mentor. Because he will just make you to be enslaved to his ideologies and not let you be able to spin out and be a leader of your own. So great leaders raise leaders that raise leaders, and the chain will always continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Great leaders raise leaders that breed other leaders. Thank you very much, sir. Can you hear me? Okay. So back to Dr. Lumide Adedeji. As it is, we find out that mentorship is hard work for the mentor especially. So the mentee actually has a lot of role as well to play. The mentee determines the capacity of connection in the mentorship. So if the mentee is not cooperating, there's a problem. But the question now is, what are the unspoken rules about sustaining a mentorship relationship? Going to the fact that mentors are always busy. Thank you very much. There are two sides to the coin. One, time. Two, resources. Those are the critical factor to sustaining mentorship. Because every successful mentor has his own pattern of life already. So you coming on board, you are adding to his lifeline. Definitely, he has to share part of his time with you to discuss, to listen and to share some experience with you. One thing the mentees ask to do is to respect the time of the mentor. And also to ensure that any discussion you have, any advice, you put it into action. Not the one that the mentor will spend his quality time with you, and at the end, you are still on the bottom of the ladder. Number two is resources. Uh, Pastor Nadoze said that one of his mentors paid for his exams. He said, go and write it again. If a mentor pay for your exam and you fail, pay the second time, you fail. Pay the third time and you fail. What will happen? If you're a mentor, what will you do? Exactly. So every mentee also should put some measure of seriousness to make the mentor to be proud of the achievement. For example, now, look at the mentors of Pastor Nadoze. How would they be looking at him? How would they be feeling now? How would they feel? Look at those who mentored this my smiling brother. If they are looking at him, how would they feel? Look at my sister. Because they started from grand zero, now God has helped them. So every mentee must know that there are two things involved, time and resources of the mentor. And the only way to say thank you to them is to come out better than the mentor. And God will bless us all. Jump those hands, jump in. <laughs> thank you very much, sirs. The questions keep coming and coming. We can attend to all the questions today. Uh, but I'm sure that our panelists will graciously also attend to some of the questions as we post them to them privately via emails and then we'll get the responses and send it back so that people can learn from your experience and we can all learn from those experience. But um, we'd like to get your parting shots in one minute each. I'll start from 
uh, Mrs. Afolayo. Oh, it's nice being here, and it's a great privilege for me to be in the midst of the great men and women of tomorrow. I want to tell you that life is not always rosy. You, have, you can have a mentor, you can have a desire, a goal, and when you, have, you, are, you are faced with challenges on the way, don't bother. Just keep on trusting God. Keep on believing in what you know you want to do. With God on your side, you can reach any level. You have listened to the panelists. All of us have spoken one way or the other. All these things that have been said, keep them, hold them, dwell on them. Go through them one, after, you know, after this program and let it be part of you. And I'm sure your tomorrow will be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Dr. Lumide. Um, in five years' time, have a plan. Have at least five mentors and five things you want to achieve in five years' time. Five mentors and five things you have to achieve. And each month, each week, each day, and each year, be measuring yourself. And in five years' time, God will do something special. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Pastor Obina. All right. Thank you. I'm flowing from what I have said. I will just say that make up your mind from now if you have not done so on areas you want to be mentored and identify if you have not done so or start the process of identifying who uh, the mentor should be. And when you get signed on, the critical issue there is commitment. You must show serious commitment and show, because, I mean, prove that you are serious over what you are uh, expecting to achieve. Give yourself a timeline, like Dr. Domini have said now. Anything you want to do without a timeline will be floating. But if you give yourself a timeline to make sure that by so and so time you are getting to this place, you will always get there. And by all, uh, beside the physical aspect of planning and all of that, make sure that you let the Lord guide your action. Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not upon thy own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Pastor today. Okay. Thank you. Um, three quick things. The first one is, you need to realize that every day that is gone without you achieving expected results is a day forever gone in your life. Mentors will help you to leapfrog and correct those days that have been lost. Start now. Number two is, you need to learn how to separate the speaker from the speech. Jesus Christ told the people, he said, see, listen. So there may be quality speech, but the, you know, the speaker may not have as much. You understand what I mean? So don't get so engrossed with trying to look for the errors, like our sister said, in your mentor. When a mentor is piloting you in the right path, please keep running. Number three is, time waits for no man. We all will one day give account of what we have done. So if anyone will help you give a better account, I think you should get on the bandwagon as fast as you can. Thank you. A rousing applause for all our panelists. Can we give them a standing ovation? It's been a wonderful time listening to you. God bless you. Real good, sir, as a man. At this point, I want to invite the YPF president and our chairman for this occasion, leaders Daniel Bamibayam and Victor Adili to do the presentation of the award as a show of appreciation for honoring our invitation and coming to speak to us on the various topics and then telling us our mentorship is a panacea for developing great leaders. I'd ask Bro Victor to present to Mrs. Victoria Afolayo. Round of applause.
Brother Neil, you present to Dr. Lumidi. Victor to Pastor Obina. Brother Daniel to Pastor Tobi. I think we would like to take a group photograph with you, says and Ma. Okay, we have an award for Professor Ndibisi Ikekwe in absentia. He's joined us virtually. Can you put your hands together? I'll take that on his behalf. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma. God bless you real good. We trust that the next time we call on you, you would answer us. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma.